Hello guys. Costa here. Today I will show you how to make this clock simulation in Blender 2.8. First thing we need to do is to go to Mixamo.com. Let's move to the Animations tab, and start looking for one. Yep. I like those moves. Alright, now go back into the Characters tab, and search for Jimmy. Who the fuck is Timmy? Let me try it again. Oh yeah, here's my man. Now just click the download button. Leave everything as it is, and confirm the download. Now open up Blender 2.8. If you are not familiar with the shortcut keys, here on the left side you can see what I am doing. Okay. We can start by deleting the default cube. Then go to File, Import, FBX. Find the file we just downloaded from Mixamo, and import it by clicking on the corresponding button. Scale him up three times by pressing S3, cause Jimmy's a big boy. Then press Shift A and create a plane. Press S15 to make it nice and big in size. Now duplicate it and rotate it by 90 degrees on the x-axis. Finally just move it back by 15 units on the y-axis. Now that we made our surroundings we can actually get into creating the cloth. Press Shift A and add another plane. Scale it up by 3.5 times and move it up by 5.5 units on the z-axis. With the plane still selected, go to the top left corner and switch from object mode to edit mode. Then right click and select subdivide. Click on this little arrow and increase the number of cuts. To get a pretty smooth cloth simulation I recommend to go above 50. I will do 70 just to be sure. Alright, now jump back into object mode, and get ready to play with the physics of our scene. First select our character, then move to the physics tab. And enable collision. Scroll down till you find soft body and cloth parameters, increase the friction to something like 15. And check override normals. We need to do the same thing for the joints of our body. Enable collision. Friction to 15. Override normals. Finally just enable some simple collisions for the ground and the wall. Alright, now select the small plane and enable cloth physics for it. We will start by choosing a preset. Click on this little icon and select leather. You can experiment with other presets, but I found this particular one to work the best for me. Anyway let's go to change some stuff. Turn down the quality steps to 10. Increase the speed multiplier to 1.4. Make it weight something like 2 kilograms. We want this thing to come down like a giant pizza. Turn the air viscosity to 0. Pump up the tension to something ridiculous like 1500. And set the bending to 3. Now, under the damping option. Set the tension to 50, the compression to 50, the shear to 50, the bending to 50. No, 0.1. Now under the cache tab, we'll set the end of our simulation at 200 frames. Make also sure to set the same number as the end frame for our scene. We're almost done. Scroll down to the collision tab. Set the quality to 5. The distance to 0.02. And enable the self-collision checkbox. For the final touch, open the field weights, and mess with Mother Nature by increasing the gravity at 1.5. Now, let's get rid of those spikes coming out from Jimmy's body. And actually enjoy our simulation for the first time.
Yay boy, looking freaking good. But I want to make it a bit more spicy. Press Shift A, select Force Field, then choose Wind. Scale it up by 6 times, rotate it by minus 90 degrees on the X axis, and move it 4 units back on the Y axis. Now set the strength at 0. I want the wind to start when the cloth is already covering Jimmy, otherwise it would be just pushed away at the beginning. Find a frame where the cloth is already kinda set. Then go to the strength value and add a keyframe by pressing on this little dot. Now move 10 frames forward, change the strength value to something unbelievable like 15,000, and add another keyframe. Finally pump the noise amount all the way up to 10. And set the seed to 60. Keep in mind that every time we touch something physical inside our scene, the simulation must be recalculated, otherwise it will act super weird. Best thing to do, is to set the time indicator on the last frame, then press play. Alright, now it's time to fix our simulation in place, so that Blender won't need to calculate it anymore. Select the cloth, then go into the physics tab. And scroll down to find the cache options. Then press on Bay called Dynamics. Good. We can finally scroll through our scene without struggling with FPS drops. Now find a frame where the cloth is well spread. Then go to the Modifiers tab. Click on Add Modifier, and select Subdivision Surface. Change the view number to 2. Then right-click on the cloth, and choose Shade Smooth. We now need to give it some thickness, cause it's still thin as a piece of paper. Add another modifier. And choose Solidify. Give it a thickness of 0 0.003. Keep in mind that Blender 2.8 is still in beta version, and it may be subject to crashes. So, if you haven't already done it, now it's a good time to save our progress. Okay, now we are going to set up the light and the materials for our scene. In order to do so, switch to Render View. Then go to the World Settings. Click on this little circle next to the color parameter. Then choose Environment Texture. Select an HDRI texture from your computer. I downloaded this one for free from hdrihaven.com, but you can find one wherever you wish. Adjust the strength to your taste. Then select the point lamp. Go to the light settings, and change it into sun. Set the energy to 3. Then rotate it by minus 90 degrees on the Z axis. Alright, now to really appreciate the render view, we need to enable a bunch of real-time options. Let's go to the render tab, and enable ambient occlusion. Depth of field, screen space reflections, and refraction. Motion blur, then open up the shadows tab, and enable the two check boxes. As a final touch, open color management and change the look to medium high contrast. We can finally get into creating the materials. Find a frame where we can see a large portion of the cloth. Then split the view in half by clicking and dragging this little corner of the screen. Change the right view into shader editor. Select the cloth, then go into the material tab, and click on new. Increase the roughness up to 1. Set the specular to 0.2. And the sheen to 2. This will give it a nice velvet feeling. I will also change the IOR to 1.333 just for fun. Now press Shift A, and search for a mix shader. Connect it. Then search for a noise texture. And use its color as the mix shader factor. Now set the distortion to 2. Pump up the scale to something like 1000. And change the detail to 4. 
Now search for a diffuse shader. Attach it to the mixer, and make some space. Set the diffuse color to black, and the roughness to 1. Now we can finally set the base color of the cloth, I will choose a pretty standard blue. Last node we need is a texture coordinates node. Just link the UV value to the vector of the noise texture. This will make the texture stay in place. Alright, now we can take care of our Jimmy boy. Select it. Then go to the timeline and find a frame where we can see him better. Adjust the view, and let's start to tweak the material. Set the metallic to 0.2, the specular to 0.5, and the roughness to 0.2. Then press Shift A and search for a mix shader. Connect it as usual. Then search for a glossy shader. Attach it to the mix. And set the roughness to something around 0.375. You can choose whatever color you wish, but keep it relatively dark. Now we can choose the color of our character, I will give him a reddish orange tint, so that it behaves like a complementary color of the blue cloth. Finally just change the IOR to 1.333. Last material we are going to tweak is for the bearings. Let's keep it simple for this one. Set the metallic to 1. The specular to 1. Then turn down the roughness until you start seeing some reflection happening. Set the IOR to 1.333. Finally change the base color. I will go for something between brown and grey. We can now appreciate our hard work, everything looks pretty good. Alright, now we can join the two views together to get a nice full screen. Before we start rendering we need to set the camera in place. Press 0 on the numpad to get into the camera view. Then left click on this rectangle to select it. Move to the camera settings, and click on the focus object option. Choose to focus on the surface of your character. Then lower the f-stop value to something unnatural like 0.9. This will drastically increase the blur quantity of the background objects. Now press the M key to open up this option menu and check the lock camera to view option. Finally just move through the environment in order to find the best spot for the camera. Don't forget to scroll to different frames for double checking that everything is in frame. Now we can move to the output settings. I will leave the default resolution of 180 and 30 frames per second. Then click on this directory icon and choose the destination for our file. Give it a name and press accept. Finally just choose the file format. I will go with the MPEG video format, but you can choose whatever you prefer. Finally go to the render tab. You can choose to do a test render with EV, and it will look something like this. By the way I ended up changing the camera angle. Once you feel quite confident with the animation, you can switch to cycles, which is much slower, but definitely more photorealistic. Here you can choose the number of the render samples. This defines the overall clarity of the final render. For this type of scene, I will set it to 128, but you can definitely go with a much higher number. Alright, now we can finally give one last look to the output settings. Then go to render, and click on render animation. And here we have it. I had so much fun making this, so I hope you had a good time watching it. If you enjoyed the video don't forget to drop a like. If you didn't, drop a dislike. But if you ever want to see this kind of stuff again please consider to subscribe. See ya.